Very good evening everybody. Um, tonight it is the first of the uh, live player interviews by Lamps Media. Um, so thank you all for uh, being here. Um, to kick us off, we've got our midfield maestro. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Aman Verma. What are you on about, Ellis? Yeah, he, he's, he couldn't make it tonight, so we have to make do with you, I'm afraid. Um, obviously, um, fans turn up week in, week out, Aman, and, and they see you turn out for Tamworth. But a lot of the time, fans don't get to know the player. They don't get to know how you arrived at, at the club and, and your career path and all that. So really this interview is to try and really break down some of these barriers really. So how did football start for you and how did you, well, more to the point, how did you end up at Tamworth? Um, came to the end of the season last season and I already had it in my head that I was going to go part time in probably around January at the start of the year. Um, and I'd spoken to Fowles a couple of seasons before and um, discussed the possibility of coming here and I was eager at the time but wasn't ready with a job and stuff in line and I, I just wasn't ready at the time to go part time. Um, but yeah, this summer um, got a phone call from them at, at probably the best time and had a meeting with Fowles and the gaffer and things went well, like the sound of everything and went forward. Um, fantastic work by a team builder as well to make that move happen. Yeah, yeah, um, really grateful. You were full time at Talk here, really? Yeah, yeah, we were full time. Uh, um, so obviously going part time was a big change, um, but I'm, I'm happy for it now, yeah. Well, we're glad to have you here, Roman. Um, it's, it's wonderful um, in the midfield with yourself and Ellis and all you know, the contributors in there this season, but it's so nice to be playing football. We got neck ache last season, to be fair. <laughs> Watching Whose fault was that? Well, where did your career start, Anna? Um, I started playing when I was a kid, obviously, um, and decided I wanted to be a professional footballer from when I was probably about eight, nine years old. Um, didn't stay at Leicester very long as a kid. I was there till I was about 13. Um, and then I went through the non-league route up to 21 and ended up signing back at Leicester as a pro. Um, from there, obviously, it's everything else has happened. Yeah, so you, are you 30? I'm 30, yeah. yeah. 30. So, a few miles left in the tank, yeah. Still not bathing yet. See, I like that. Um, yeah, I reckon I've got a good few more years left. I look after myself, um, try to eat well, try to keep fit and conditioned. So hopefully I can play for a few more seasons. Yeah, another okay. six, sorry. And how's the transition been for yourself going from a full-time footballer to a part-time footballer? What difference has it made to your life? I feel like I've got recovery um, a lot better from games mm -hmm. just because I've been able to rest properly and the stuff I've had to do maybe after a game on Saturday, I'll go for a stretch and stuff on a Sunday. Monday, I'll go to the gym and do a bit of conditioning rather than run around intense training and stuff like that. So it's helped my recovery loads. And I've been ready for Tuesday, either games or training sessions. Same with Thursdays. And then in between, I go to the gym to just to make sure I'm conditioned, stretched out and stuff. So it's helped, it's helped that way. Well, what do you do when you're not playing football for Tamworth or training? What do you do for a living? I work as a graduate surveyor for a state agent. So um, I'm doing that cow thing with Shonky Brothers. Check it out. They do auctions and stuff, so if anyone wants to buy any properties. Um, I'm doing a bit of uh, energy broking as well on the side, and um, I go to uni as well. Okay. You're, you're a busy man. Yeah, and I've got a family. Hmm. Tell me about that. I've got a daughter, five years old, and a wife. So. Um, got to upkeep everything there as well. Yeah, so yeah. Did she run to, to watch you play? She's come to one game. I think my daughter's come to one game this season so far. It's a bit hard because it's a bit cold for her to come to the games. Oh. So I'm not standing out in the cold too long. <laughs> Bless her. Um, what would you say so far in your career then, Arman, has been your proudest moment 
footballing one. Um, I know what you've got written down there when I was playing for Darlington in the FA Trade Cup final. And that's it. Um, yeah, that was at Wembley. Obviously, that's a proud moment. Yeah, and also playing for Leicester because that was my hometown and, and I made them. Yeah, of course. So the Wembley game, uh, I believe Darlow won one 0 against Mansfield. Yep. And you come on as a substitute? Yeah, which I shouldn't have been a substitute. I played every single game, started every single game for the club when I went there on loan. And then that was the only game I didn't start the final at Wembley. So very decent to be involved with I'm not sound about it. No, not, not, not at all. I'm just trying to move on from that one. Yeah. <laughs> Twenty five thousand roughly there that day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a wicked atmosphere. Five hundred and something last week against Southport. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's probably louder at Southport than it was at most Arlington games. We had a twenty five thousand seat stadium and hardly yeah. anyone there. So Yeah. Um that might tie in a little bit to my next question actually. Um, what do you feel are Tamworth FC's strong points? As a, as a whole club and organisation, obviously the, the funding that you guys are giving us um, helps a lot, bringing in players and supporting us on away trips and stuff like that. Um, also, as a, as a team, staff and stuff, that they're so on it with the sports science behind everything. We wear our GPS vests, have our body fat tested and all stuff like that. So. But that's just to basically keep us working hard in condition and, and that's always going to help the younger players especially for progressing um, and it's good for the older players because we need someone to keep us motivated to keep us trim and um, the staff are doing that um, the way we play football as well I mean this team passes the ball a whole lot better than my team did last season at Torquay and um, it obviously comes from the players wanting to play football and the, and the managing staff that want us to play football and teaching us the best way to do it. Yeah, I guess it's really about getting those decisions right on the day, playing the right pass at the right time and not, unfortunately at times, Tamworth have shot themselves in the foot, giving City goals away. Yeah. It's all about balance, I guess. I yeah, that, that's probably been our major, major setback with letting City goals in, but um, the positive side is the way we're playing, we're, we're always looking to play football, like going into games we're thinking how we're going to create chances, how we're going to make goals and um, it's better to have that mindset going into games and we might be a bit open sometimes at the back but that's what we're compensating for with, with trying to create goals. I think most people would agree with that to be fair. Um, moving on to the final question really, um, personally your own personal goals for the rest of this season and indeed beyond into ne the next couple of seasons really, yeah. where do we stand? I, I, I want us to finish as high as we can and obviously the playoffs is the, is the biggest aim. Um, I don't want to jinx it by keep talking about it but that is, that is obviously the goal for us this season, to make the playoffs and, and you never know what happens after that. I guess not. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but um, everybody, round of applause for a man who's finally seen Thank you very much.